SJC 13503, Roberto Cruz v. Commonwealth. Okay, Attorney Isley, whenever you're ready. May it please the court, Kate Isley on behalf of the Commonwealth. Mr. Cruz in this 258D case is ineligible because his convictions for indecent assault and battery were not reversed on grounds tending to establish his innocence of the indicted charge of assault and battery. That's kind of a, a strange case, and, and I'm not suggesting that Mr. Cruz is commendable, but he, he, we're, we're dealing with a footnote in an appeals court decision when they say, oh, by the way, he probably was guilty of A and B, and then we look what happened on the ground in the government dismissed the A and B, so it was never before a jury. So how, how, does, that, um, how does that jive? Well, this is a, a unique case. Right. However, um, in, in determining eligibility under 258D, courts are required to look at the judicial relief overturning the conviction. Here, that's Cruz was this, 1. Was this dicta, though? No. Throughout Cruz 1, in more than just footnote 8, the appeals court Flat out said, the defendant gave Jane a third hug without her permission. It said, that was at page 137. Right, that was a factual. That's a factual finding. That's a factual finding. There's no liability. Through, well, the, it, the Cruz one also found that and Cruz by the way, intentionally touched. I looked touched. at the record. Um, the only statements, the judge essentially twice emphasizes consent is not an issue anymore. Um, because you dropped the assault and battery charge. So he doesn't allow any kind of development of the facts, rightfully so. I'm not criticizing the judge. And all we have is, she, at one point she says she's a little bit alarmed, and at another point um, she makes a comment about, I didn't ask for the hug. Those are the only two factual statements in the record on this. So isn't this not only dictum, but some level of appellate court fact finding? Mm. No, that Your Honor. You don't like? I would, I would two, two things. First, I would point um, the court to this court's Guzman decision, where it said that um, facts adduced uh, of guilt at the criminal uh, trial is not. Um, required by the statute. This is a civil statute. And the, the, the language that we should be looking at in eligibility is section 1B2, which provides that a court of competent jurisdiction has to have overturned a conviction on grounds tending to establish innocence. That innocence so as me, set let me, forth let in. Me, let me just push you on that. Because I, grounds tending to establish innocence. And I know, and I, I think you're correct. We obviously have to look at Everything indicted. I think I disagree with his interpretation that we only look. But the grounds of the decision are twofold. One, he's, there's not enough evidence for indecent assault and battery. Two, you know Prost, the assault and battery. Now, I understand there are different meanings we can draw from your yeah. decision to know Prost. But those are the most important grounds of the decision. Right. The, so first, the, uh, the prosecutor can null pros a, a, a charge for a myriad of reasons. I agree. And that could be because the prosecutor wanted to, to pursue the charge that had carried a, a higher sentence or f for a myriad of reasons that are not, um, that another, we don't have the facts. Another reason is I may want to avoid this whole issue of consent because this young lady um, at one point asked, do you want the hug again? Um, she's also got some, I can't remember, mental health questions related to this. So this issue of consent may be complicated. They don't want to get into it. There are all kinds of reasons why you could have null process this. Right. And the, the, but you did null process it. <laughs> yes. And the statute um, provides that the 
Cruz 1 has to be on grounds tending to establish Mr. Cruz's innocence. It is, it shows absolutely the opposite, that a nearly 16 year, six year old man brought a 13 year old girl to a secluded room, hugged her very tightly around her waist without her permission. But, but all of that, you still have the problem though, because a few minutes ago before Justice Kaffir's questions, you kept saying that the facts, the facts, there are no facts. And, and although you might want to look at that footnote or some of the things that were, that were uh, adduced at trial, there are no facts here. And this is what Jones Pinnell said we can't do as an appellate court. So yeah, you're right. You have the discretion to null pros anything you want. But, but, but the consequence of that for this case is we haven't any facts on this issue. So how, how do we say that, that, that it's not applicable here? The, the, the statute requires ineligibility for the court to look at the four corners of Cruz 1. And this court has construed, tends to establish, as looking at the facts and circumstances probative of whether Mr. Cruz is innocent of the crime That's exactly or crimes what I'm getting at. charged you said it again. in the indictment. You said it again, facts and circumstances. The trial judge, because of the Commonwealth's decision, there are no facts and circumstances that we have here that have been tested during the course of the trial. Well, the, if you look at Cruz 1 at page 138, the, the appeals court um, says that the facts are not in dispute as to Mr. Cruz's intent, his intentional touching of Jane without any legal justification or excuse. Was it, was, it, was it open to the appeals court to have reversed the indecent A and B and remanded for new trial on A and B? No, because the, as the court said, um, simple A and B is not a lesser included charge of indecent Indecent. assault and battery. That's not the standard that the legislature has set in in, um, creating Chapter 258D, um, which is- So he stands acquitted of indecent A and B under the courts? Yes, but but being acquitted is not the same, being acquitted either through a null pros or a a reversing of conviction is not the same as being innocent or eligible under Chapter 258D, as this court has, had a number of 258D cases that differ entirely from Mr. Cruz's situation. I thought, you, I thought you're not suggesting that he is, that the appeals court found insufficient evidence that it was indecent, correct? So That's correct. So there, he, he is innocent of the indecent A and B. No That's doubt. correct. So the only issue is what significance we have when we have an acquittal on that on innocence grounds, and we have you null processing, so we can't make a fact finding on consent or lack of consent here. Doesn't that get, it doesn't mean he's gonna win. Right. Doesn't that get him over the eligibility threshold? No, because Cruz won was not on grounds tending to establish innocence. This might be helpful to you. Well, he's innocent of indecent A and B. Meaning what he did was not indecent. I'm not, by the way, I'm not commending it in any way, shape, or form. He, um, but the appeals court concluded it wasn't indecent. Okay. Unlike Guzman and Drummond and Renault, where their convictions were overturned on grounds that they were not the perpetrator of the crime, either through misidentification or witnesses recanting or in a, uh, or being, you know, the person in the car without the constructive possession in the Angel Santana case. Not saying that that's this the This is Mr. Only Cruz, grounds, we know he You're not saying that's the conduct. only grounds that are covered by the statute identification, are you? I'm sorry. You're okay. not suggesting that the only grounds covered by this statute are identification, Absolutely right? not, but grounds that tend to establish that an individual is not the perpetrator of the crime, as the amicus, um, the New England Innocence Project hypothetical set forth. If, if the, the person that is alleged of um, murdering the cab driver, um, if, if he, he is DNA exonerated, it's likely that that exoneration would also tend to establish his innocence of any so related in your view, charges of, In your view, say, all you need is the first, the first piece. Because if it's 
in your view, if you get over the hump of it doesn't establish actual innocence, then you're out. If it does tend to establish actual innocence, there's no need to go any further. If the, if the, if, I, I think I understand your hypothetical. If the, if Cruz one tended to establish his innocence, not just of his convicted convictions, but any crimes for which he was indicted or other reasonably related felonies. And, and I submit that that happens in cases of DNA exoneration or where, where the, it's not the guy where who the person the didn't crime. do the act. We know Mr. Cruz did this act. And but, what but we, we don't know, we don't know whether that. it's wanted or unwanted. We, that's it. That's the consent issue. And again, I'm going to push back because this seems to be a, a Justice Lowy day. But <laughs> you, 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 you null pros the case, right? So any of the things that tend to support, in your view, you're saying he's got to be factually innocent. But let's just talk about legally innocent. You, you null pros the A and B count. So all of the things that even if you're going to put all of this stress on what they say in, in, in Cruz 1, none of that, and this is the Justice Lowy part, has been tested under the crucible of cross-examination. So you've got no, we, there's no way that we can test what are the facts because all of the stuff that in Cruz 1 that the appeals court is talking about haven't been tested because you're no prostate. And the judge said, no testimony on this. So how can you say it's a fact when it's just one side? That's not how we do trials. The other side gets to cross-examine that. Well, I, I would, well, first, at page 20 of uh, Mr. Cruz's brief, he, he concedes that evidence of a battery um, was, of course, at, um, admitted at trial. But the analysis for 258D is not to um, look back at evidentiary decisions by the criminal trial court is to look at the the judicial relief overturning the convictions, the four corners of it, and say, is there anything in that um, in that judicial decision that tends to establish this individual's innocence of not just his convictions but his um, other indicted crimes? Um, or related felonies. And here, there's nothing in Cruz 1 that tends to establish he is innocent of the indicted charge of simple assault and battery. Well, it, it, there's, your decision in null process has multiple meanings. You know, and let me pose this hypothetical. If the evidence was that she wanted the hug, I um, mean, that the, the if that if the evidence was leaning that way, as you oppose, you say it goes the other way. Um, but if the evidence were that way, would you still be arguing that this appeals court decision um, does not tend to support whatever the language is? If the facts are the opposite, that it looks like she agreed to the hug because she wanted the gift. If the if Cruz won the language of the decision of the majority said the the plaintiff gave her cons or I'm sorry the victim gave her consent what if, if it had we said would be in a different what if um, it said situation? the following um, you know maybe we could have they, maybe you should you could have brought it to a and b because the issue of consent is unclear here um, Mr. Cruz is still not eligible because really? wow. yes, because the the statute it, that would be consistent with innocence. And if you look at the legislative history of Chapter 258D, the first version was consistent with innocence, mm -hmm. and that was, I believe, vetoed. A gubernatorial amendment was added to make it more restrictive. It has to tend to establish. So an acquittal is perhaps consistent with innocence, but it is not does not tend to show. Innocence. This case is more like the Peterson case, where the exit order um, out of the car was did not tend to establish innocence. It's more like the Fregata case, which was an appellate case that was not reported, but where the Commonwealth um, one theory of their. Um, but Justice Gantz in that case says, the appeals court, you should have and invites what happens here too a little bit. It says you shouldn't have, you should have addressed the insufficiency of the evidence issue in your decision because there wasn't sufficient evidence in that case and you shouldn't have done this motion. I, I have no idea whether that's correct or not, but um, here we can't, 
we don't know whether it was insufficient or not. Isn't that the next stage of this thing? Um, I'm, I'm glad you brought up Justice Gantz because I, I meant to talk about that too because his concurrence said that um, appellate, criminal appellate courts, their decisions have consequences. Um, later in 258D litigation, and that if Mr. Peterson is correct that the the dangerous weapon wasn't a dangerous weapon, um, that um, that he that his conviction might have been um, on grounds That's tending to establish in that innocence. case, he could look at the record, and and an appellate court can legitimately look at a record and say there's insufficient evidence to justify, and that's what they did here on the indecent assault and battery, right? But what what the appeals court does here is something different. Without having a factual record, it opines, and it may be right in the end of the day, but you didn't, pros you didn't prosecute that case, and we don't have any fact-finding on well, it. Well, two things. Cruz 1 occurred after Peterson. Mm -hmm. So the Cruz court um, can be presumed on notice of Justice Gant's uh, concurrence. And it elected, in grappling with Mr. Cruz's conduct, whether it was indecent under the Commonwealth's indecency laws, or if it was just intentional, inappropriate, and amounted to, I would suggest that footnote one makes explicit its entire decision that his conduct was both unwanted, intentional, and without any legal excuse or justification. And 258D requires us to look at the four corners of the judicial decision and the the fact that the um, that the 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 appeals court in Cruz elected to uh, describe fact. it that way. Fine facts. Fine facts. What's the difference between uh, 258D one B and 258D one C in in your view? Well, 258D one B two and one B one are the eligibility. Um, provisions and 258D1C is the merits argument. However, so, yeah, 258D1B2 okay, yeah. um, incorporates Clause 6 of 258D1C in a way that um, you've lost me. You've lost me. Right. So there's I, there's two parts. Right. Mm -hmm. First, you have to show you're eligible for the possible. Uh, compensation, and then if you if you th cross that threshold, you have to show by clear and convincing evidence that you're innocent. But it sounds to me like you're saying that Mr. Cruz has to show by clear and convincing evidence that he's innocent before, and that's that's the one thing he has to do to get by the eligibility. No, so um, and admittedly, the statute is. Um, is a complicated, but if you look at um, B2, it says that um, the judicial relief has to be tending to uh, overturned on tending to establish innocence of the individual as set forth in. And those are the key words, as set forth in. The indictment. Um, clause six of uh, s subsection C. So not all of subsection C, okay. what, but only so what clause, does clause six. six say? Clause 6 says crime or crimes charged in the indictment or complaint, and that's the important language here. Um, assault and battery was charged in the indictment. It goes on to say, or other felonies reasonably related to the facts of the case or something like that. I can get you the actual language. But the relevant language is, so, so uh, Clause 6 defines the innocence of the individual that the judicial relief must tend to show. And that is complicated. I'll admit that. But if you... Um, but how do they... When you null pros the additional charge, and how are they ever going to show innocence then if, in your world, because... Um, You've no prostitute. The appeals court gave you a, a raft to cling to, this dictum, but you no pros this. There's not a factual record. It, it, I just don't know how, we're, how anyone's ever going to establish. If, if there's always a possibility, you could have brought it. For, you know, I, I don't know. Tell well, me. Well, that goes back to the fact that this is a bit of a unique case. Most 258D cases 
all of the 258D cases where this court has found eligibility pertain to folks who, whose claims were reversed on grounds that they were not the culprit or the perpetrator of the particular crime. The ones that are, were found not to be eligible, like in Peterson and Omar Santana and Fregata and Riley, those all are in a different subset. And I would suggest that Cruz is in that subset. Well, what subset is that? The subset of not eligible because- oh, but, but that's just the conclusion. But what, what's, the, what's the conduit? The conduit is the, the, the decisions overturning their convictions said nothing about that tended to establish the innocence of, so in Peterson's a great example, and I, I think closest to this case. Um, Mr. Peterson's uh, convictions were overturned because of the unconstitutional exit order. And even though he raised on appeal the fact that the knife was not a dangerous weapon, the court did not reach that. So his, when he brought his 258D case, it was not, he was not eligible because his conviction was overturned not on grounds tending to establish innocence. That's exactly what we have here. <coughs> Mr. Cruz, his conviction was overturned because his conduct was found to be not indecent, but his conduct was not found to be and didn't, and, and I said found to be, it should, it did not tend to establish, which is a term of art this court has construed. I, I know you're going a little bit long and I just want to make sure that I have you uh, crystallize this for me. So you're saying in a world where the Commonwealth null process a case, a, a charge, excuse me, and there's no facts adduced at trial on this, that somehow we're still in a position to, to divine whether uh, the, 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 what we have demonstrates the threshold issue of tending to establish innocence. Yes, the, the plain language of the statute says nothing about um, null processing or dismissing a case. It says it tends to establish the innocence of the in individual of the crime or crimes charged in the indictment. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Attorney Rappaport. Yeah, well, good morning. Um, I, I'd like to uh, begin um, by distinguishing the Peterson case from, from this case, if I may, because it's come up. Um, in, in Peterson, there were basically two issues presented to the appellate court. One, was there the illegal exit order? And two, was the knife, um, did it meet the qualifications to be considered a dangerous weapon? The court had jurisdiction to deal with both of those issues. Both of those issues were raised on appeal. And it had a full record on both of those. And issues. they had a full record, right. The fact that the court chose to deal with the exit order and the exit order only and reverse the conviction on that basis had nothing to do with whether or not the defendant in that case was innocent because he didn't commit a crime if, 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 the, if the knife didn't uh, comport with what was illegal. Um, so. The court just chose which issue to deal with, and, and Judge Gantz said, hey, look, court should be careful about this because it might have impact down the road, but what the court did was totally appropriate. They dealt with an issue, reversed the but case. But didn't it invite sort of, doesn't Justice, Chief Justice Gantz's approach invite what the appeals court did here a little bit, mm. which is, okay, I, I'm going to be criticized if I don't deal with this little elephant in the room. I, I would submit no, because whereas the appeals court had the jurisdiction on both issues in Peterson, mm -hmm. the, they, they begin the, the, the opinion in this case by saying there's only one question presented by this case. Were the touchings indecent? Not were they inappropriate, not were they icky. Um, look, there's no question that this is not going to be an easy case to win uh, for Mr. Cruz at trial. I mean, there's no question about it. The question here, though, is was he, is he eligible because his case was reversed on grounds that, facts and circumstances that tend to indicate his innocence? His innocence of what he was convicted of. 
he was convicted of two counts. No, but it has to be both. It has to be beyond what he's convicted of, right. because the statute. Your, your opposing counsel is clearly correct that you look at the charges in the indictment, not just what he was convicted of. So it, you're it, stuck with that part of it. It at trial. At trial. No, but it would include lesser included offenses, right? Well, uh, well, that's that's interesting, Judge, because obviously this is not a lesser included right, offense. But, but I, I actually find the, the the language even more confusing than everybody else does. <laughs> I, I know sometimes I stand up here and say, it's easy. But it, no, it's not easy because, or any other felony. Right. Well, does that refer to the I would assume charges, what's charged in the indictment must be a felony? Right. You're a superior, you were a superior court judge. I know that I appeared in front of many occasions. How many times, in my last two murder cases, um, one last March and one last July, there were uh, misdemeanor charges brought along with the murder charge. Uh, in, in one case, I, I believe it was firing a, 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 the gun within um, a, a 500. 500 feet of a... The judge looked at the prosecutor and said, you really want to bring that in this murder case? And at that point, the prosecutor said, eh, maybe not, and, and dismissed the case. Okay, let's just assume, let's just assume that down the road, the person did fire a gun, but had nothing to do with the murder. And 10 years later, that's, that's established. But he never had his, his opportunity in court to say, no, I didn't fire that gun. He was indicted for it. Nothing in the eventual opinion that, that, that um, he's released on says anything at all about that gun. You mean to say if, if the person gets a DNA exoneration on the, on the shooting after 15 years, the, the bringing of that indictment for firing the, the, the within, but, but there, that's the, going to prevent the person from... But from, civil recovery, you know, this, this is a potential significant recovery, and they've defined tending to establish your innocence of everything you were charged with. I mean, I don't, I don't think you can read that language out of this. I understand it creates all kinds of problems like what we're confronting here. Judge, mm. I'm, I was not appellate counsel for Cruz, but let's assume I was, and I see what the issue is, especially in the appeals. I'm not saying necessarily here. If I don't dot my I's and cross my T's when I write a brief, my brief gets rejected. If I were to violate appellate rules uh, 16, 7, or 9, if I were to put in a whole statement of facts supporting the fact that Cruz did not commit the assault and battery, right. there's no place for that in my brief. It's not an issue on appeal. Right. When I make an argument, I'm not going to argue that, that he's not guilty of assault and battery, simple assault and battery, because it's not an issue on appeal. The sure. court takes the facts in a light most favorable to the Commonwealth, where there's been no advocacy at all by any uh, counsel on behalf of Mr. Cruz to say, no, this is not an assault and battery because consent with, lack of consent was never established. And we do know factually on the record, the judge precluded the establishment of lack of consent. First, when the prosecutor tried to get into the issue. No, 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 no. On his own, the judge just says, no, the consent has no place in this case. Then when defense counsel says, well, did you ask him to take his hand off or words to that effect, the prosecutor objects, as she should, because the judge has already laid down the, the law of the case. And no, ladies, you can't ask that question. Forget about that answer. It doesn't have any place in this case whatsoever. How is there going to be a statement so how in do we, support of the defendant right, I get, under those I, circumstances? I totally get what you're saying. The problem I've got is so how do we analyze these issues when the well, legislature included the basically this, con this context, which is something is dropped? <laughs> well, two things I'm going to say. And, and by the way, it's not... You know, th there are lots of reasons why they drop those claims. They may not want. They may want this to be a, an all or nothing. They may think this is and not judge, worth. This may not be worth the time to do it. Reading a the trial transcripts, I, I know that I, I tend to put some nefarious motives behind certain prosecutors' 
Um, not all prosecutors, but in this particular case, I, that was, and, and there's discussions between the, the prosecutor and, and the judge about this. Well, if you're gonna let it go to the jury on the basis of indecent, I wanna take away the, 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 the simple assault and battery because a jury in a case like this might actually use common sense and come back assault and battery. I don't want that to happen. I, I, I mean, this well, was that's done sort of so what, he could get that's sort a 15 of what the year sentence as opposed to a house. That's what, sort of what the appeals court did, right? Excuse me? The appeals court sort of exercised its common sense, as you put it, um, and kind of started opining on this. The, the appeals court listed facts which are going to be very difficult for Mr. Cruz to show at trial that he didn't commit this crime, if that's in fact what he has to show. And, and I still say to this court that the more and more I read the statute, every time I read the statute, I find something else that seems to be uh, uh, odd. <laughs> in, in this particular statute, you talk about, well, no other crimes committed or other felonies. And then it also says lesser included felonies. Are we merely talking about felonies or are we talking about any crime? that was alleged in the indictment. Well, I, I know you're saying that, that, that this, the only thing that we should be looking at is what he was ultimately vindicated on, on appeal, and that's the indecent. But let's just deal with the no other crimes thing. Uh, so how can, uh, in, in how can we divine the gating requirement in a case where the charge has been null prost the trial judge has said, "We're not. I'm not allowing any evidence on that." Uh, don't you? Don't I know you? I know what you're saying is you'd rather win on on the stuff that was adjudicated at the appeal. But don't you also win on this other part where if there's no facts on here, how can how can we oh, determine I, that 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 he's out of the gate on at least getting a trial? I, I absolutely agree with the court. I, I, I'm just trying to look at worst case scenario and, and, and still justify uh, Mr. Cruz's ability to now that he's eligible, bring this lawsuit. So we, we, we have the situation where if there was a lesser include or, or a felony that's out there and the legislature says basically, you're not eligible because there's this felony you probably committed, so we're not gonna let you sue for, um, for wrongful conviction. But when it's a misdemeanor, it's a different strangely well and and i also find it odd that this felony out there that's never been charged i, I mean, this statute would almost preclude uh, a, a a claimant from uh the ability to well, bring I, lawsuit I, I, I guess what well, you know some so felony that somebody an appellate court says you know this isn't really before us but when you look at these facts a prosecutor could have brought this particular charge a felony. Unless there's, and, a, and unless, there's a, that, unless there's a remand from manslaughter, or you know, the, 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 you, I, you're I, guilty of. You, 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 we're going to find required finding in so much of the judge should have required issued a required finding of, of first degree, but we're going to remand it, and you could try him for manslaughter or second degree. That happens regularly, frequently, right? I, and, I, and that and that means you wouldn't be eligible to to sue. Uh, for a civil suit. Well, but, but there you still committed the crime. I mean, and it's been adjudicated that by first by the jury, and, and now you're getting the break from the appellate court. You, you've been adjudicated. You've had a fair chance to present your case. In this situation, you don't even have a chance to present your case. To, to, to say, no, I'm, I'm not guilty of, of, of simple assault well, and battery. Everything. There was consent here. Right. Or at least guilty. there was no lack of consent. I'm not guilty of everything they charge. You don't get a chance to prove I'm not guilty of everything they charge me, and I spent two and a half years in prison because of that, right? That's your argument. I spent two and a half years in prison under the worst circumstances imaginable because I was convicted of a crime I never committed. Right, but you may have lucked out that you were no prost on one that you did. Um, but uh, maybe, but it, as Justice George says, we don't know. The, it was never, the jury was never given the opportunity to decide. No fact finder 
ever decided. Right. All the appeals court said was, we look at these facts, and these facts may have been an avenue toward a conviction of assault and battery. But for whatever reason, the Commonwealth chose not to take that path. I'm just trying to get a sense. Of, I'm trying to lend meaning to the statute in this context. And, and maybe Justice Gaziano's solution lends the meaning, which is the lesser included. But that we're usually convicted of the lesser included, right? Even if they're dropped, or, or, it, or well, you, if you, the lesser you guys included are the pros dropped, in this, but a you lesser still included get in the charge to the jury. The so, jury is still given the opportunity to come back on the lesser included. Right. Okay. Well, there are myriad lesser included that that aren't even raised. Like, why would you charge the B and E? Right. Why would you try You could try the but, home but invasion. You could try the home invasion. Nonetheless, in those cases, you still have the facts that have been made out on the I, record. I, 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 I get your point. On that, the record. Yeah. I get your Here point you, that you, you weren't given the opportunity because of the unique circumstances of this case where the judge says, this is a 14-year-old, there's no consent issue, don't talk about it. In fact, if you look at the Drumgold case, if you look at the... Um, uh, a Guzman case, two cases I'm very familiar with. Guzman, I was appellate counsel, and, and Drumgold, I was the uh, trial lawyer. I know those cases. What happened in those cases was important evidence was kept from the fact finder. Drumgold didn't come out and, 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 and excuse me, Guzman didn't come out and say he's not guilty. What happened in Guzman was evidence was kept because of the conflict of interest evidence was kept from the jury that would have impacted, ne wouldn't necessarily have meant that he was not guilty, but it would have impacted the finding as to whether or not he was guilty. In fact, in Drumgold, the, the decision, the decision which um, uh, reversed the case, specifically, and this court noted, the decision, this is not a determination of the defendant's guilt or innocence. There, there, there's no determination, no, certainly no affirmative determination of guilt or innocence or innocence in either Guzman or in Drumgold. And, and, and the decision in Drumgold said, no, this, this, has, this decision doesn't have anything to do with, it was an unfair trial, period. They, they didn't say whether or not. It, it, Although the, the evidence in those cases, right, tend to establish that it's the wrong guy, right? That the evidence that's precluded is identification evidence, right? Um, and, and you know this better than I do. I don't remember those cases that well. Well, I, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, but <laughs> when I first appeared in the Superior Court on, on uh, uh, Guzman, I, I, it looked like I had two heads. Wait a minute, there's nothing in here that, that, that's saying he, he didn't commit the crime. I mean, that's how the judge had originally looked at it. Right. You have to look beyond sometimes the, 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 the opinion itself. Right. So what, what are we to make of um, the part of uh, 1B2 that says that the person has to have been um, granted judicial relief on grounds which tend to establish the innocence? What do we make of that part? Do we just take it out? No, grounds that tend to establish innocence, it, in the opinion itself, he didn't commit this crime. Innocence of the, of the crime he was convicted of. Excuse me? It, we're reading it to be innocence of the crime he was convicted of. He was, there is no reason for any uh, appellate lawyer or appellate decision to address acquitted conduct. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's, it wasn't advocated in any way. I, I mean, it's so unfair. First of all, you don't allow the fact finder to make the determination, and then you don't have any argument uh, 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 with regard to that particular uh, uh, appellate court finding of fact. Mm -hmm. So grounds to establish, that tend to establish the innocence of the individual are we... Conviction. Conviction. That, that reads out language in the statute. It does. That's well, the, that's I, the I would problem. say that the language in the statute then augurs back to what you have to establish at trial that you didn't do this, this, or this. Or you have to prove that you're innocent by showing don't, you didn't commit this crime, this crime, this crime, or any crime. Don't you win by, with less? You, don't you win if, if he was acquitted on the, the charges they charged him on, and the null process itself 
may it, it's ambiguous, but and there's no fact finding um, that supports conviction on the charge he was not that he was charged with, the the crime he was charged with, but not that wasn't prosecuted. That you've got enough. The gist of the opinion, the substance of the opinion, tends. To, to establish it. I, I would submit that that's so. That's, that's as far as we have to go. We don't have to, because your other reading presents all kinds of problems. You're acquitted on various counts and you're convicted on other counts. Um, does that mean you were wrongfully convicted on the, I mean, you're innocent of the, I don't know. That just seems not what the legislature had in I, mind. I know that when I do an appeal in a criminal case, I look at, um, certain issues. I raise those issues. The, 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 the Commonwealth deals with those issues. The court then deals with those issues. Mm -hmm. Unless it's a 33E case, they're not going beyond those, those particular issues, um, nor should they. Uh, and, and, and that's the dissent in, in Cruz too is basically, where's the court's jurisdiction to even get into this? It's not before them. And, and, and for them to and, and frankly, I don't even know that it's that clear what the court's saying. I think what the court is pointing out, you know, the Commonwealth could have prosecuted this case, but they chose not to get into whether or not it was consensual or not. It was the Commonwealth's decision. So where is, why is the appellate court even opining about something that's not before it? I, I just don't understand. Just going back to this, um... So grounds which tend to establish the innocence of the individual to you means anything that's absence of evidence. There's no evidence, so that tends to establish the innocence of the individual? Absence of evidence can tend to establish the, the innocence of an individual, yes. Absence of evidence. Right, the absence of anything. And, so and this, then that tends to prove the innocence well, of Well, and I, I, I submit that both the, 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 uh, uh, the opinion and the uh, concurrence say that, but there was this absence of evidence, so we really can't say whether or not he committed an assault and battery, because the evidence isn't there. 